Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, as you've probably guessed by the title and the thumbnail, today I'm going to be talking about caffeine. Do give it a thumbs up if you like it, but let's just go into the video. Before we look at how caffeine helps us stay alert, we need to understand the role of a very important chemical called adenosine. Adenosine is one of many important hormones which help to regulate our sleep-wake cycle. Adenosine is produced by the breakdown of ATP, or adenosine triphosphate, which is essentially a chemical form of energy. When we're awake, our bodies require a huge amount of energy, so it therefore consumes large quantities of ATP. This ATP consequently breaks down and causes the accumulation of adenosine as the day goes on. These adenosine molecules bind to receptors and by the end of the day we begin to feel tired as our body gets a pretty strong signal that it's time to go to sleep. Then, during the night, adenosine levels decline again as ATP is regenerated and we're ready to wake up. But this is where caffeine comes in. Caffeine has a very similar structure to adenosine which allows it to bind to the same receptors. As a result, adenosine can no longer bind and prepare your body for sleep. In fact, quite the opposite happens. Rather than calming your nerve cells, caffeine stimulates them, which boosts their activity. This increased excitation in the brain is registered by the pituitary gland, which triggers the release of the hormone adrenaline from your adrenal glands. And this is where coffee can make you feel a little bit giddy. Adrenaline is known as the fight or flight hormone, which plays an important role in emergencies, so its effects are pretty extreme. Your heart rate will increase, your airways open up, your pupils dilate and your muscles tighten up. Which explains why you can feel a little tense and feel your heart beating faster after a little too much Red Bull. But it doesn't stop there. Caffeine is pretty potent. It also causes an increase in the level of another neurotransmitter called dopamine by slowing the rate at which it is reabsorbed. Dopamine helps control the brain's pleasure and reward centre, which causes the mood lifting effect of caffeine. But this manipulation of dopamine levels is also thought to contribute to caffeine addiction. Personally, I know way too many people who need at least three coffees a day to function. And unfortunately for them, caffeine dependence is a hard cycle to break free from. Prolonged use of caffeine leads your body to create more adenosine receptors, which means in the absence of caffeine, the effect of adenosine is even greater, making you feel sleepier than you would have done before. This triggers a vicious cycle where someone needs more caffeine to get the same effect, only further exacerbating their dependence on the substance. And this caffeine tolerance develops surprisingly quickly. The sleep disruption effects of caffeine can be seen after only a week of consuming 400 milligrams of coffee three times a day, which is equivalent to three venti coffees at Starbucks or 7.5 monster energy drinks. Complete tolerance can be seen at this rate after just 18 days. <laughs> 